A whole lot of shaking going on in the last 36 hours. Dozens of earthquakes have been recorded off the southern Oregon coast. A catastrophic earthquake in the Pacific Northwest would topple buildings and bridges. Where the land meets the sea on America's far western edge, a restless future is being written beneath the silver tides. The Oregon coast has always held a peculiar allure, a fog-wrapped world shaped by wind, water, and the slow hush of Pacific surf, tucked between moss-draped forests and rolling breakers. Coastal towns seem to cling to both their history and their sense of steadfastness. But beneath this image of serenity, the ground, literally, is shifting. For generations, people along the Pacific Northwest have lived with a fragile peace enchanted by the coast's brooding landscapes, but comforted by the seeming stability of the earth underfoot. Only occasionally, when a distant tremor rattles windows or a scientific report lands in the news, does the specter of geological risk slip into public view. Yet now, with mounting urgency, that calm is fractured by an alarming reality. The Oregon coast is not only sinking, but it's doing so faster than once believed and the implications ripple far beyond simple erosion or encroaching tides. New research has emerged, casting the spotlight on ancient forces simmering below the sea, forces with the power to redraw coastlines in a matter of minutes. Scientists, more urgent in their warnings than ever before, speak openly of tsunamis capable of swallowing towns, of earthquakes that could shake for five long minutes, of a coastline changed forever. The threat is not confined to Oregon. It extends north and south, reaching even to distant islands like Hawaii and the stormy bays of Alaska. Why, after centuries of quiet, is this land flexing now? What hidden energies are straining below the waves? And could the next chapter of disaster strike not on some far-off fault, but here, between forest and foam? Beneath every footstep on this coastal earth, is the countdown already ticking? The Cascadia Awakening, a zone of peril. Trace your finger along a map from Northern California through Oregon and into Southern British Columbia. Here, impossible as it might seem while standing on the beach, is one of Earth's great hidden scars, the Cascadia Subduction Zone. Unlike the high drama of California's San Andreas, Cascadia is a silent behemoth deep, distant, and almost perfectly camouflaged by the ocean's vastness. But it is this concealed fault line that carries the region's greatest risk. Recent research has cast a brighter, more unsettling light on the stakes. The findings. There's a 15% chance, one in seven, that an earthquake greater than magnitude 8.0 will erupt along this stretch in the next 50 years. What does that mean? for the nearly three million people who live in the shadow of Cascadia. Cascadia is the kind of tectonic fault that rarely moves at all, until, without warning, it moves all at once. Subduction zones are where one tectonic plate slides beneath another, building up centuries worth of strain that must, eventually, be released. And when it goes, the result is breathtaking in its violence. Scientists warn of a once in 500 years earthquake capable of shaking for five relentless minutes, sending 100 foot tsunamis racing toward land, shaken relentlessly by a planet flexing its muscles. But it is not only the ground that threatens to betray its inhabitants. The new urgency stems from dual dangers, geology and oceanography, mixing in a perfect storm. Sinking land combined with rising seas means that the margin for safety is thinning with every passing year. Which is the greater risk? The quake, the wave, or the slow, unstoppable creep of subsidence? Or is true danger found in the collision of all three? Cascadia does not threaten only the coast. The trembling beneath Oregon would send ripples up the length of the Pacific coast, rattling Seattle to San Francisco, and even Alaska and Hawaii might feel its echoes. The web is vast, and it is tightening. What stories are hidden in the silence before such a storm, waiting for discovery 
in this newly awakened zone of peril. The sinking coastline, land, lost to time and sea. To walk today along Oregon's beaches is to glimpse a drama unfolding at a speed too slow for the untrained eye, yet racing, by geological standards, toward a tipping point. Headlands that once stood proud now slump inch by inch. Tidewater edges, once buffered by dunes and marshes, surrender to the salt more easily each winter. But it is not just the familiar cycle of erosion at play. The very crust beneath western Oregon, under the boardwalks, roads, and seaside homes, is subsiding, settling downward in ways both subtle and sudden. Why does the coast sink? The answer lies in forces that transcend human scale. Every few centuries, the Cascadia subduction zone releases its pent-up fury, shifting the North American plate in one giant seismic exhale. These earthquakes have a peculiar, devastating signature. As the western edge of the continent lurches landward, it abruptly drops, robbed of the upward pressure once exerted by the oceanic plate below. The sinking isn't measured in fractions of an inch, but can be in feet, enough to drown forests, swallow farmland, and redraw the very maps that guide us. There's evidence that this process is not solely a relic of ancient earthquakes. Modern techniques like GPS and LIDAR suggest that parts of Oregon's coast exhibit ongoing subsidence, with rates and patterns that indicate complex interactions between tectonic events, sediment compaction, and evolving sea level. For coastal communities, it is as if the countdown set by the last great quake is accelerating, pushing the coastline toward a lower, more vulnerable future. This sinking, combined with rising sea levels fueled by a warming planet, is the double bind few foresaw a century ago, and the consequences are enormous. For every inch the land loses, storm surges bite deeper. For every foot, the zone of inundation creeps farther inland, eating away at property and security. But the most haunting uncertainty is this. If the earth is already moving downward, what will happen when the subduction zone finally snaps again? The landscape of drowned forests and buried estuaries inland act as silent witnesses to what can happen when the ground abruptly subsides. As old landmarks inch lower, are we not just chronicling a slow loss, but foreshadowing a catastrophe that could one day arrive without warning? The Great Earthquake, Measuring the Unthinkable. How do you prepare for an earthquake whose scale defies understanding? The memories of earthquakes past, San Francisco's ruined skyline, anchorage fractured in the cold, loom large in American consciousness. Yet even these disasters pale beside what scientists now believe may one day hit Oregon and the greater Pacific Northwest. The hazardous heart of Cascadia is silent until it isn't. There is a 15% probability that within the next half century, this fault could generate a quake greater than magnitude 8.0, a monster by any measure. Unlike California's more frequent, less powerful quakes, Cascadia's subduction fault stores centuries of strain and can unleash it all at once. Recent studies depict a 500-year event that could last as long as five minutes, an eternity when the world is coming apart at the seams. For reference, the 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan, lasting just over six minutes, spawned a tsunami that swept entire villages from the map, killed thousands. Cascadia's event, scientists say, could be comparable in duration and devastation. When scientists model the next great Cascadia quake, several truths emerge. The shaking itself, but it is the aftershock, the ocean's response, that promises the most far-reaching destruction. Tsunami simulations paint a chilling picture. Massive waves, born seconds after the crust ruptures, racing toward land at jetliner speeds. In low-lying towns, alarms may offer just minutes of warning. And this threat does not end at Oregon's borders. The geography of disaster stretches. Waves can strike hard in Northern California, sweep up the Washington coastline, and, flung far by the physics of water, ripple out to Hawaii and the shores of Alaska. Worse still, the destruction would not be limited to the initial moments. A great earthquake would leave a fractured land, a coast literally changed in places forever. Ports would be rendered useless, beaches reshaped, wetlands turned into salt marshes overnight. 
Who is ready for the quake that outlasts memory and the tsunami whose reach defies imagination? Tsunami on the horizon, the looming wave. Tsunami, a word that enters the public vocabulary only in times of crisis, yet one that coastal scientists recite as a daily mantra. In Cascadia, it is not the tremble of earth alone that draws dread, but the wall of water that may follow, unforgiving, unrelenting, and impossible to outrun. New warnings from researchers focus intently on this aspect. Should Cascadia rupture, the resulting tsunami would not be a gentle swell, but could reach 100 feet, high enough to overtop nearly every structure in coastal towns, from Brookings to Astoria. Imagine, if you can, wave after wave, each as tall as a 10-story building, charging inland with the combined force of a thousand freight trains. The science behind such a prediction is precise and daunting. When the ocean floor heaves during a great subduction event, it displaces a vast volume of water. The resulting tsunami moves quickly. In some locations, the first impacts could occur within minutes of the quake, arriving before any external help can reach the region. Unlike Hollywood portrayals, tsunamis aren't a single wave, but a series, sometimes arriving at staggered times, sometimes striking hardest, not with the first crest, but the third or even the fifth. In the quiet, after the initial quake, as survivors run for high ground, subsequent waves could turn lowlands to ocean, destroy infrastructure, and isolate communities in need. The tsunami threat is not limited to Oregon. The wave would echo along the entire Pacific margin, striking at California's coast, rolling through Puget Sound, into remote Alaskan inlets, and even distant harbors in Hawaii. There is a harsh truth in the prediction that permanent flooding could follow. The land, already sinking, can't rebound easily once swept to sea. Brackish tides would transform fertile fields to salt flats. Entire forests could become ghostly stands inundated by the ocean. As warnings intensify, a single question haunts the coast. Are escape routes, alarms, and communities prepared to move faster than the waves themselves? Or, in the race between land and tsunami, has the outcome already tilted toward the sea? Warning systems and the race against time. Amid this backdrop of risk, preparation carries both hope and urgency. State and federal agencies work constantly to detect early signs of earthquake and tsunami danger and to make warnings meaningful. Every extra moment saved in advance could mark the difference between safety and tragedy. Modern tsunami alert systems, earthquake early warnings, and real-time GPS networks now watch the Cascadia coast more closely than ever. Coastal sirens sound regularly in practice drills. Town councils debate shelters, mindful that in some places, the difference between flood zone and safe ground can be a matter of only a few feet. But new research makes clear what residents fear. The window for action may be brief. In some places, the first tsunami could arrive within 15 minutes of the earthquake, less time than it takes for help to arrive from outside the region. For the most exposed, survival hinges on fast, decisive action. Each new year brings new pressures. Populations grow along the coast, critical infrastructure clusters at the water's edge, and climate change pushes high tides ever higher, narrowing escape routes. Still, efforts continue. Researchers refine their models. Local officials fight for funding. Against the certainty of tectonic cycles, can human preparation win a measure of safety? Or will natural processes simply outpace our attempts to defend ourselves? Living on the edge, memory, myth, and the silence between shocks. For most who call the Oregon coast home, the big one is a legend, hazy, unproven, but ever-present. The last truly giant Cascadia quake struck before the region was fully mapped or settled, yet local culture guards this memory, a knowing glance at high ground, a cautious respect for the ocean's power. For indigenous peoples, the story is older still. Oral traditions recount times when entire villages were swept away and the land was remade overnight. Even now, Ghost forests inland and ancient shell middens, uncovered by erosion, bear witness to nature's cycles. Modern life threatens to dull this memory. Still, with each tremor, each oversized tide, and each published warning, the old stories surface, 
scientists gather evidence, but their graphs and projections often echo what the land's oldest inhabitants have known for generations. In the silence between disasters, communities make a choice to prepare, to adapt, or to hope for luck. Which decision will shape the Oregon coast's future? And what new stories will arise from choices made today? A coast reimagined. The challenge for Oregon is not just scientific, but imaginative. Maps must make room for land lost to the sea, for harbors pushed further inland, and for communities adapting to new patterns. If disaster comes, recovery will call for a new resilience. Whole neighborhoods may need to relocate. Markets may change to reflect a shifting shoreline. Even memory, embodied in place names, traditions, and ritual, must evolve with geography. Yet out of this uncertainty, possibilities can arise. Historically, disasters have forced societies to rethink how they live together and value their land. Already, scientists, communities, and leaders across the region are piloting new approaches, seeking not just protection, but adaptability and hope for the generations to come. Can a region famed for wild beauty become a pioneer in adapting to change? Will the memory of loss deepen respect for nature and foster new forms of solidarity? Or will complacency win out and the next generation be left to face the consequences of denial? The next question. In the hush before dawn, the Oregon coast remains breathtaking, firs and cliffs silhouetted against a sea forever restless. Fishermen cast their nets while children dig in the sand. The routines of daily life continuing as if nothing lies beneath but stone and time. Yet in truth, every tide carries the whisper of much older dramas, every tremor the promise or the threat of a future remade. Today's headlines ring with unfamiliar urgency. The land is sinking faster than expected. The chance for a magnitude 8.0 quake, 15% in the coming decades, grows harder to ignore. Tsunami risk is not speculation, but substance, underscored in every study, every evacuation plan, every voice raised in warning. Yet, for all the data and diagrams, the essential question remains, will we pay attention while there is still time? Can we look past the myth of a steady coast to see the true shape of risk and respond, not with panic nor resignation, but with purpose. The story of the Oregon coast is not finished. It is being written now in the measurements of sinking land, in the vigilance of communities, in the interplay between science and hope. The earth will keep its secrets only so long. Then, in an unplanned moment, it will speak in quakes and waves. Our role, as ever, is to listen and to decide what we will do next. If you've been with me this far, you know that the most peaceful places often hold the most turbulent futures. So stay alert, stay curious, keep asking, where will the next chapter of our geological story begin? Like this video to keep the search for answers alive. Subscribe so you won't miss the latest discoveries beneath the edge of the continent. And in the comments, tell us, are we doing enough to prepare the coast for what is coming? Or do you think the greatest changes are still hidden waiting to rise with the tide? Thanks for joining us. And remember, on the boundary between earth and sea, every calm moment is just one more page in a story that is never truly at rest.